Hi, and welcome back to the Pelvic Empowerment IBS series. My name is Tori, and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis, and this includes bowel dysfunction. Last year, I decided that I would try and unpack what I have learned about irritable bowel syndrome in a video series, and today I am so excited to be adding a requested ninth installment to the series that focuses on the drug Viberzi, a prescription that can be used to manage the symptoms of diarrhea dominant IBS. In today's video, we are going to start by talking about what Viberzi is and how it works. We'll then briefly talk about its history, its price, and some important drug interaction considerations before we end by discussing its side effects and its efficacy. As always, you can check the description below for timestamps and links to any and all studies or resources mentioned in today's video, as well as links to all of the other videos in this series. Let's begin by talking about what Viberzi is and how Viberzi works. So generally speaking, all drugs have an active ingredient and all drugs belong to a certain drug class. Let's use a much more familiar drug. Let's use Motrin to help better illustrate active ingredients and drug classes. Motrin is not a steroid and it is used to reduce both pain and fever, which means that it belongs to a class of drugs known as NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The active ingredient in any drug is the ingredient that has therapeutic effects on the body, and in Motrin, the active ingredient is ibuprofen. Viberzi, on the other hand, helps to manage diarrhea dominant IBS symptoms by acting on the gut's opioid receptors, and it's known as a mu opioid receptor agonist. Its active ingredient is eluxodoline. Viberzi is really interesting though because it actually acts as a mixed mu opioid receptor agonist, which means that it also demonstrates other opioid receptor agonist or antagonist activity. It also acts as a delta opioid receptor antagonist and a kappa opioid receptor agonist. What does that mean exactly? Well, generally speaking, receptors are found in all parts of the human body. They essentially receive input and then tell the body to do something in response to that input. You can think of them as a sort of switch connected to a lock and key mechanism, much like the ignition system in your car. Only the binding of a specific chemical to a specific receptor will turn on the switch, just like only your specific car key will turn on your car's ignition system. A receptor agonist turns on the switch. A receptor antagonist makes sure that the switch can't be turned on, so it effectively turns off the switch. As far as opioid receptors go, it turns out that we as humans have an endogenous opioid system all throughout our body. That's why opioids affect us. We have opioid receptors in our central nervous system, in our brains and our spinal cords, in our other body organ systems, and all throughout our bodily tissues. The names that these opioid receptors are given, mu, kappa, and delta, are actually just Greek letters that are assigned based off of the first drug that we knew of that turned them on. For instance, mu opioid receptors are named mu because morphine was the prototype drug that we knew of that could turn them on. These mu, kappa, and delta opioid receptors are found all over our body, including in our guts. When we zoom into the GI system, we think that these opioid receptors are associated with gut motility, pain sensation and the secretion of fluid into our intestines and we think that Viberzi is effective because it essentially tells the gut motility to slow down, it decreases pain sensation, and it decreases the amount of fluid that is secreted into the intestines. When someone has diarrhea, the contents inside of the intestines move through the intestines
intestinal tract move through the GI system really, really quickly. They have a really fast gut motility. So slowing down that gut motility would be really helpful because it would allow the contents inside of the intestines to be better digested and it would allow the water inside of the intestines to be reabsorbed back into the body, which means that this person would have much better formed stools. Anything that decreases abdominal pain when it comes to IBS is of course a wanted and good thing for symptom management and decreasing the amount of fluid that's secreted into the intestines should also improve someone's stool consistency, should make someone's stool consistency better formed. So that's what Viberzy is and that's what we think Viberzy does. If you want to learn more about the endogenous opioid system or if you want to learn more about the opioid system and how it affects the GI system, I've got some links in the description below. But for now, it's important that you also know that Viberzy is considered a Schedule 4 drug because it does affect the endogenous opioid system. According to the DEA, Schedule 4 drugs have a low potential for abuse and a low risk for dependence. But this does mean that Viberzy is a prescription medication. You cannot get it over the counter. It is available in both 75 and 100 milligram tablets and it's usually recommended to be taken twice daily, always with food. All right, let's move into discussing Viberzy's history and price as well as some important drug interaction considerations. Viberzy was approved by the FDA for the treatment of diarrhea dominant IBS in 2015 and currently there are no generic versions of Viberzy available which means unfortunately that it is quite expensive. Insurance sometimes covers Viberzy although it seems that most of the time it doesn't and a 30-day supply of Viberzy costs anywhere between six and seven hundred dollars. It is very important that you discuss with your prescribing physician any other drugs that you are currently taking, as Viberzy does have some drug interactions that are worth mentioning. According to the National Library of Medicine, Viberzy does interact with some OAT, P1, B1 inhibitors, and drugs that cause constipation. You can see these drugs listed here, but I do want to emphasize that if you've had an organ transplant, if you are currently taking drugs to manage cholesterol, if you are taking antiretrovirals in order to manage HIV AIDS, if you are taking antibiotics for tuberculosis, if you are treating thrombocytopenia or anemia, or if you're taking a losatron or other opioids, please, please make sure to mention this to your prescribing physician. Now that we've talked about what Viberzy is, how it works, its history, its price, and some important drug interaction considerations, let's end by discussing some side effects that you may experience on this drug as well as this drug's efficacy. How well does this drug work? Calling back to the National Library of Medicine, common side effects of Viberzy do include constipation, which is the top reported side effect with this drug, as well as nausea, abdominal pain, upper respiratory tract infections like bronchitis or runny stuffy noses, vomiting, dizziness, gas, rash, and fatigue. It is also super important that we mention that Viberzy can negatively affect a part of your body known as the sphincter of Adi. The sphincter of Adi is an important valve that regulates the flow of bile and pancreatic fluid into the intestines. If you have had your gallbladder removed or if you have any history of pancreatitis or any liver, gallbladder, or pancreatic issues, please, please, please please tell your doctor and really consider whether or not Viberzy is appropriate for you as pancreatitis is a potential side effect of this drug. It's rare and it seems to happen more to people who have their gallbladder removed or a history of liver, pancreatic, or gallbladder issues. Finally, let's talk about efficacy. How effective is Viberzy in treating diarrhea dominant IBS? The FDA approved Viberzy based off of two 
phase three clinical trials. In these trials, researchers randomly assigned about 2,400 adults with IBSD with either 75 milligrams of Vibersi, 100 milligrams of Vibersi, or a placebo. In one trial, patients took Vibersi two times a day for 26 weeks, and in the other trial, they took it two times a day for 52 weeks. The results essentially found that at both the 12th week mark and the 26th week mark, about 30% of the patients who were taking 100 milligrams of Vibersi two times a day were better compared to less than 20% of the patients in the placebo group. But what does that actually mean? Well, the researchers defined their primary endpoint as patients who were better 50% of the time while taking the drug. So according to these trials, Vibersi will help 30% of the people who take it 50% of the time that they're taking it. Because of this, Vibersi isn't usually considered in the first line of treatments for IBSD. It's usually prescribed when other more conventional treatments fail. That being said, when we turn to the internet for patient reviews and anecdotal evidence, Vibersi actually gets a really good rap. Could it be that the 30% of the people that it helps are more compelled to write a review than the 70% of the people that it doesn't help? Sure, but I still went through all of the good and bad reviews and compiled some commonalities in the good and the bad to share with you. Honestly, there was only one commonality in the good reviews and one commonality in the bad reviews that I really want to highlight. In a lot of the good reviews, the patients leaving those reviews were reminding others to be open to playing with the dosage. Some people were saying that instead of taking two 100 100 milligram tablets, they only took one 100 milligram tablet in the morning, or some people were taking a 100 milligram tablet, cutting it in half, taking 50 in the morning, 50 at night. But the underlying commonality was a gentle reminder to be open to kind of playing with the dosage, tweaking how much of the medicine you're taking. And of course, you need to do that under the supervision of your physician. But it's a good reminder to remember that everyone's body is different, and taking the recommended dose might not quite be what your body needs. And the one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention, a commonality in the bad reviews, unfortunately, was warning others of pancreatitis as a potential side effect. This means that some people were being prescribed Vibersi even though they had their gallbladders removed or even though they had a history of liver, gallbladder, or pancreas-related issues. Again, if that's you, if you have any of those things in your past medical history, tell your doctor and seriously consider whether or not Vibersi is the right drug for you. Pancreatitis is a serious, sometimes life-threatening condition, and it can have long-lasting side effects, so make sure you do your research. As I mentioned in my video on Linzess and Trulance, the really tough thing about drugs in general is that there is no such thing as a good drug. Drugs have side effects, and drugs affect different people differently. I still think the best thing that you can do if you are considering considering using Vibersi to try and manage your IBSD symptoms is to approach its use as a trial for your symptom management and to come into that trial with as much information and knowledge about the drug as possible. That way you aren't attached to a specific outcome, you know what's normal, you know what's a potential side effect, you know what options you have to alter the drug to better serve you, and ultimately you can decide whether or not the drug drugs benefits are worthwhile for you and your individual GI system. The other thing that I wanted to briefly mention before ending this video is that my research led me to a connection between IBSD and something called bile acid malabsorption or BAM. I don't want to get too into it here but essentially some of the negative reviews for Vibersi that I was reading said hey this drug didn't work for me but that's because it turns out that I have BAM and treating BAM made me feel significantly better. So if conventional IBSD treatments are failing you or if Vibersi fails you, take a minute to research bile acid malabsorption. Take a look into BAM. It seems to have really changed some people's lives with IBSD for the better. All right, thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to be creating this series for 
for you and I do have other ideas of videos for the series. I do still want to investigate other treatments of IBS like fecal transplants and more alternative treatment therapies. I also want to investigate IBS and its relationship to anxiety, depression, and mood in general as well as sleep and exercise, but if you have any other ideas, any other topics that you would like me to discuss during this series, please go ahead and leave your request below in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it. Feel free to comment requests or anything else down below. I do try really hard to read and respond to all of my comments. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and find Finally, please subscribe to the channel for more content, not only about pelvic things like the IBS series, but also about life things. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.